Helsby High School is an 11 to 18 school. With, we've got about 1,350 students in the school. We had a number of TLCs, so in our school we had nine because of the number of staff. And in each TLC there were approximately 10 members of staff. Each TLC was led by um, a main scale member of staff, so I thought it was really important that um, it was led from, from a teaching perspective because that's what it's all about, the teaching and the learning of the students. So each meeting of each TLC was 75 minutes and the agendas were given to us and um, I have to say that when we were setting up the project the agenda looked sort of quite formal um, and quite very structured. We weren't sure, you know, it maybe felt sort of quite in, maybe inflexible, but actually it was completely the opposite. Um, myself, the TLC leaders, when we met, I actually thought, actually, this gives us a real basis, a real sort of scaffold to begin discussions. And then importantly, um, after that, sort of the discussion, the exploration of materials, um, looking at strategies, looking at the resources, there was that time built into the meeting, which was incredibly important, where staff talked to one another. They worked with a peer, they worked as a partnership, and it was a really important learning conversation about their own practice. The programme, plus the, the fact that we don't grade individual lessons, has meant now that lesson visits uh, have become more about celebrating the many strengths that exist across the school and getting staff to reflect in a less threatening way about aspects that they could make better within their teaching. I um, found the TLCs really supportive and it gave us a great opportunity to collaborate um, as a team of practitioners. It gave us time, it gave us space to um, discuss aspects of pedagogy that we probably wouldn't otherwise have sat down and, 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 and discussed. It provided a framework but also it provided freedom for us to look at um, different aspects of, um, of, of our practice. When we talked through student voice, there's an increasing number of students that have got a clarity of their current progress in terms of the things they can do well, not just progress in terms of, an, of a GCSE grade, but actually a clarity around these are the topics that I can do well and I feel confident in. These are the things that if I were to improve further, I would be able to make further progress. However, I would say it's the impact upon teaching and learning and that is obviously evidenced through the learning walks that we do, the lesson visits we do, but also staff and student feedback. And I know from the, my experience in going round into lessons that I'm actually seeing really lively debate and questioning and staff really dealing with misconceptions as they occur. The impact that the project had on achievement was actually tangible. Their results were improved when I triangulate that with the lesson visits, et cetera, that we did. Um, you know, in a previous year we had, you know, our measure was not as, as strong as we would have liked it to have been. Um, and it was really lovely to come in the summer and see smiling faces and a real positive improvement. Um, and not just for the students that we always know are going to do well, but actually for those students who are disadvantaged, actually having that feedback, the support of the strategies that we were using with the project in school really helped them to move on with their learning. Because for a lot of students, they're not getting that support perhaps at home and they were actually getting it in a classroom on a regular basis. The meetings are something that's been really useful in terms of sort of getting us together so it's felt like a community really. All of us from similar departments or across departments have been sort of placed together and it's given us the opportunity to really talk about our practice and actually think about well what is going well and what do we need to develop and also to steal ideas from other people. The biggest impact I've seen on my learners is the independence that they have now. They all understand my expectations have increased. So the impact on learners is, for instance, with the DIRT strategy that I've been working on, directed improvement and reflection time, is that students are sort of dirting their work before I've even asked for that to happen. So through the practice and through the embedding of the practice and making sure that students know this is something I am going to do, it's not a fad, I'm not going to do it once or twice and then forget it. It's actually embedded into my practice. So the students are actually 
one step ahead and it's saving me time because of it. I um, adapted a strategy that somebody shared with me for a start or an entrance task and that entrance task is my chocolate bar. I give the students a small piece of paper, they fold it three times so it creates eight squares so it resembles a chocolate bar and what they do is they write down at least three things that they can remember from the the previous sort of set of learning that we're looking at so I can I can see what they're able to do. I then give them time where they can then go around the room and they can talk to other students and discuss what they have learned, what they have remembered, what they were able to recall and then work with students so that they're discussing their learning so they try to fill up their eight boxes. What that does is it immediately lets me know the areas that I've taught before, what they've actually remembered, what they've, they've grasped and I they can see sort of maybe there's one thing that they haven't that I'm going to pick up on and I'm going to use that lesson um, to work with that. But it's a really busy active task that really gets them straight into the lesson and actually making connections with what we've done previously. I think I'm more aware of ideas to use in the lesson, sort of techniques for AFL and ideas that are easy to implement but you can get the most out of the children so you know what, what your children understand. You know, particularly little things, say like the exit cards, you can just all of a sudden in one go, you know what the class has understood just by using something like that. The most important thing with the visualiser was actually gaining the confidence and the support of the students in putting their work up there. At first students were a little bit reluctant, but actually when they saw how positive it was and they really felt celebrated when it was their work that was, was on, the, on the screen. And the supportive atmosphere that that's created in the classroom, because they all know, oh, actually how would I feel if that was my work up there? And they work together then and offer really supportive advice and I actually think the, um, the visualising and the use of that to do sort of live sampling to give immediate feedback has been really powerful because when the students are looking at that and one person's work they're actually then making notes on their own and that is what's powerful because it's giving them that, that sort of understanding of oh how I can self-edit, how I can actually question what I'm doing as I'm going along and I think there's a sense of staff ownership. They um, feel very positive and you know that when you've walked down the corridor and somebody stops you and says oh that was really useful, I really like the connections. And I think it's quite interesting in our lessons we're talking to students about making the connections between one lesson and another and one subject and another and actually the Embedding Formative Assessment Project has actually made staff work in exactly the same way. We're making connections, everything sort of underpins. The project has created a foundation for RCPD and then we're developing upon that foundation.